Today we're tying a 1 32nd bluegill jig. Stay tuned. So good morning. Today in the vise, I'm going to tie a pattern for bluegill. We're going to put in the vise a 1 32nd ball. And this will be a color uh, that I know will look uh, work great uh, for springtime bluegill. Just trying to tie something a little bit different. I'm having a little bit of fun today. So I'm going to lock on my 2 aught round nylon thread in the center of the hook shank and walk it towards the point of the hook. I first have some of these long uh, hackles. They're pretty flimsy. I don't use them much uh, occasionally for a wing or two, but what I like using uh, hackle feathers like this for mostly and let's just cut off the fuzzy part at the bottom is these nice long fibers I can take a pinch of them I kind of line up the points so they're all about the same length and then I can take the pinch off and I tie that into place loosely loosely lock it on and I want them to extend the length of the body past the bend of the hook if it's slightly short I can just tug on it just ever so slightly just to pull them through my knot. Add a little bit of pressure just to help them roll to at least three sides of this hook shank before I add a wrap towards the bend of the hook and then walk it back up towards the head to lock it in place. At this point, you can add a drop of head cement to your base. You don't need a whole lot of cement at this point. It does add a little bit of durability, though I'm not trying to uh, glue the jig together. Let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit. And then I can with touching wraps, walk my thread back up towards the point of the hook. And as you can see, there's a slight taper, but for the most part, that's, that's pretty even. For the body of this jig, we're going to do two things. I have some tinsel yarn which I will cut myself a length that I can work with. So we're going to add some tinsel yarn and we're also going to add a palmered hackle. This is a ginger hackle to uh, complement the gold color. Uh, another good color uh, for this palmered hackle would be uh, pink to match the head and the tail. I think would also be great with that gold um, body underneath. So let me look. Do I look. This one looks a little bit better. So here's a ginger hackle feather. Uh, I'm not too worried about the length. I want this to be about one and a half hook gap in length. Not not more than that. I don't want it a big spidery kind of legs. Uh, on a fly tying hackle gauge, this is about a size 10, but give or take. You know, we're tying, we're tying jigs for panfish. We don't have to be so perfect. So, what I will do is I will just nip that fuzzy parts off, and then I cut just a little bit. Up each side of the quill 
leaving some of those fibers there just to give the thread something to bite into. And with the top of the feather, I'm gonna lock it into place right here. A couple wraps towards the bend of the hook, one or two wraps back. And then my gold tinsel yarn. And this gives an awful nice flash. The tinsel yarn I can extend a little bit and I'm going to lock it in place and allow a tail, a little bit of a tail, to extend down the shank of the hook. So a few wraps towards the bend of the hook and then with touching wraps I'm going to walk this up towards the head. And this is this will be a little bit unruly so I'm just going to snip it away. So it's about the length of the hook shank and continue my wraps touching wrap towards the head of the jig there we go and now i can take the tinsel yarn my first wrap will be angled towards the bend of the hook and then as i come around i can then angle it with touching wraps towards the head of the jig That last wrap, as I came around, I brought it to the outside of my bobbin. So when I switch hands, I can pick up my bobbin and lock that on with just a few wraps. Next, you can take your hackle pliers. And we're gonna palmer this hackle feather with open wraps. Do this again. The tips break off, that happens. Again, one full wrap and then start angling it towards the head of the jig with open wraps. And the last turn around the jig head, I can pick up my bobbin and lock that right into place. That was pretty close, the tip is right here in my hackle pliers. If if there was still a little bit of a tip there, I would have would have kept tension on that and then nipped it nipped it off. Like I said, these the palmered hackle is one and a half lengths of the hook gap, one and a half times. And to finish this, I'm going to take another ginger hackle of similar size. This time I'll strip from the quill and just give myself a little bit of space where I can tie this into place. That was four wraps on top of the quill and then I'm going to put two wraps with the thread between the head of the jig and that tail of the quill to sandwich that into place so it won't come apart. We're going to take this and palmer it so it has a nice thick collar. Three wraps to give it a nice mane, kind of like a lion's mane. And I'm angling my thread, touching the head of the jig, so as I come around, it pushes any fibers that want to force their way forward and pushes them back again. The tip came off in my hackle pliers, but because I had switched hands and locked that on, it did not come unraveled. Very pretty jig. We can finish this off with our whip finish tool and again angling it so it rubs against the head of the jig pushing any fibers back and three rotations is all you need to lock this into place 
I'm catching a couple fibers on the underside. Not too bad. And then you can nip that flush. Take it out of the device, just look at it. What I'm looking at is I was, as I came around, I had to correct myself. But I did trap a few of these fibers where they were uh, locked in and tied down uh, where they would be crowding the uh, eye of the hook. And that's why I unwrapped one of those wraps um, just so I can reposition the thread. And as you can see, there's no trimming needed. You don't need to cut anything away. To finish this off, we're going to use lacquer based head cement. And like we said, we're using this primarily for bluegill for the springtime. I like to fish these under a bobber right above the weeds as, as the weeds are starting to grow and make their way towards the surface of the lake. So let's turn off my face. And this one thirty second ball head it's a color combination that I uh, like using on other jigs uh, it's got that gold tinsel the uh, tinsel yarn making up the body and then we use the palmered hackle to give the body uh, a, a, a wider profile to make it look like it's a little bit bigger than just a skinny tiny jig. The hackle fibers for the tail complement the head. Just a pretty jig. This will fish nicely underneath a bobber. I think that'll do it for us today. If you enjoyed what we did here, go ahead, uh, add some comments down below. If you have any questions on the materials or the uh, techniques that we've used, um, add those comments down below. As always, like and subscribe so you don't miss any new content. And feel free to share any of the videos that we do as it, as it does help with um, building awareness to the channel. I'm going to tie a few more of these. Uh, I'm going to find some uh, more pink hackle uh, to add that uh, instead of the ginger to use it for the pink hackle bodies. Um, but until next time, guys, keep tying and tight lines.